Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is September 25th. The year is 2023. This is a special YouTube premiere, which means I'm live with you right now in the chat. We would love to interact with you. Tonight, I'm going to teach you how to make a Christmas step card that pops out above the rest. This one will stand up on its own, and it has an incredible pop-out feature and pop-up feature as well. You're going to love the cascading stairs to this card. Now you're going to want to grab that free project sheet down in the video description below because it's going to include a designer series paper template for you, which is going to make a lot more sense when tonight's stream is over. But that has all the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies, not only for the card I'm going to demonstrate tonight, but for the other cards I'm going to share with you as well. And they're pretty amazing. Now I want to take a minute and let you know all about Gina Hawley. You'll see her name off in blue off to the side. She's here to interact with you along with myself during tonight's premiere. We're here to answer your questions live, so please interact with us. In order to do so, YouTube requires that you log into your Gmail account, which gets you into your YouTube channel so that you can comment or chat. Now, please keep in mind that I come back and I read every single comment, so I would love to hear from you. All right, we're ready. Let's get started. I want to give a huge shout out to Madge. She was the one who actually taught me this card. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love it. And I'm going to teach you. She provided incredible instructions for me along with a beautiful card over a year ago. And I finally got around to be able to demonstrate it for you. Now the card base is five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to use the envelope punch board. That's a link for you on my website under shop craft room favorites. This is not a standard A2 size envelope. You're going to want to make sure that you start with the paper vertically. So this is the five and a quarter inch side. We're going to start by placing this in the trimmer where the left edge is at one and five eighths of an inch. Now that ledge at the top is going to ensure that I have the paper nice and straight. I'm just going to scoot you up a little bit so that you can see the whole thing. Now tonight I opted to use white paper on the card that I'm demonstrating so you can see better. But I'm also going to do the cutting and scoring with the blades and also with the pencil so that you can see a little bit better. My best tip for you about any fun fold is always try it on scrap cardstock or copy paper first so that you get a good feel for it. We are now going to navigate the cutting blade up so that it's here positioned at the top. We are going to align this at the three and three eighths inch mark and we are going to create a slice from that mark to the six and five eighths inch mark. So what you're going to want to do is align that little arrow that's here, which is impossible for you to see on camera at the three and three eighths inch mark. So I'm going to bring that down to here and I'm keeping the arm up on my finger so that it doesn't hit the paper until I'm ready. Once I've got it there, we're going to go ahead and drop that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut or slide the blade down to six and five eighths, which is here. And I'm going to go ahead and lift that. Now I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to do the exact same thing now with my pencil so that you can see it. And I know it's going to be quite faint, but I think you get an idea. And I'm pretty close to where the blade is because, of course, this is a pencil lead and not the blade itself. We'll navigate that blade back up to the top so that it's in position. We're going to keep it vertical and we're going to move it over now to the three and three eighths inch mark, which is here, making sure that it's nice and straight across the top. You're going to use the cutting blade one more time. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut from the one and five eighths on the trimmer to the five inch. So we're going to bring it down to one and five eighths. We're going to drop the blade and we're going to cut to five inches. So we're going to drag and cut. I'm going to lift that so it's out of the way. And once again, I'm going to try to do a little better job with my pencil line now down to the five inch mark. So now we've got these two lines here. We're done with the cutting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rotate this to the left. And all we have to do now is create some score lines to connect these intersections. This is the eight and a quarter inch side here across the top. You're going to take the left edge. You're going to bring it to one and five eighths. Again, up here against the top. Once this is aligned at one and five eighths, we are going to score from the top to that first cut line, that pencil line that's right here. So all we're going to do is come down to the bottom. I'd like to go from the bottom up because I find it's easier for me. So we've got that little area scored here. Let's go back over this with the pencil line one more time so that you can see. So that's our next score line. You can see we've made a quadrant here. 
We're going to move the paper over to three and three eighths of an inch again, making sure it's nice and straight at the top. And we're going to score it downward from the top of the paper all the way down to the cut line here at the five inches. So we're going to score. Once again, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put my pencil right there so that you can see. So we're going to move over to the five inch mark here on the left hand side, paper against the ledge. This time you're going to start the score line at the bottom of the cardstock upward through these two blocks connecting this line here and I'm scoring. Moving that out of the way and I'll bring in my pencil so that you can see. You can see the steps starting to form. Now this next one we are going to have to do at six and five eighths and where this is where that amazing extendable arm comes into play. So six and five eighths we're going to line that up and now what we're going to do is we're going to score from the bottom upward to meet this line here. So from here to here and again I'll take my pencil so that you can see it. All right so this is what we've got. Now it's not pretty obviously on camera because we've got all of those lines but for me that was real important that you got to see where we were going. I'm going to go ahead and use my pencil and I'm going to erase this so that it's not too obtrusive when we put the card together. I get lots and lots of questions about this pencil and it's my favorite craft pencil ever. You'll find it linked for you on my website under shop craft room favorites and you can see how awesome that eraser is as well. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to do want to do some creasing. Since the score lines are already there just a matter of pinching them a small section at a time. So the first one is here and it's going to be what we call a mountain fold. You see how it comes to a little pink. The next one is going to be a valley fold which means it comes in. We're going to make a little crease there. This one here is going to be a mountain fold. So we're going to crease that up here. And then this one here is going to be a valley fold and I'm just pinching the paper. I'm not creasing all of it. And then this one is going to come forward another mountain fold. And this one is going to be a valley fold. So you can see how it's starting to make the steps. Now I will tell you right now that no two of these cards that I have made ever came out perfectly because none of us cuts and scores perfectly. So this next step I found to be very, very important. Now intuitively you're just going to want to crease it up, right? But what I found is I wanted to make sure that these edges here were straight. So while I'm going to kind of condition the paper just a little bit, I'm going to look here. And I'm going to try my very, very best to make sure that this outside edge is even as possible. And then I'm going to crease over it once again. And I'm going to work my way now across the cardstock. Now you're going to see that little bit of bubbling. Don't worry, we're not all perfect. So we're just going to make some concessions along the way so that the card can stay flat. This is where your bone folder is going to come in. And I want you to go over those steps and crease down those pop out areas. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the exact same thing now on this side. This is exactly how it's going to fit in the envelope when it's closed. But you might be looking at this thinking, how the heck are we going to decorate this? This looks like a challenge. And that's where that template in the free project sheet I've got for you is going to be wonderful because I've got all the measurements for you by the placement. So it's going to make it simple for you. Now I did do those ahead of time. So we're going to go ahead and bring some of those in, but then we're going to talk about decorating those panels so that it makes a really great presentation for the pop out on the step card. I'm going to bring in some basic white cardstock here. We're going to do a little bit of stamping and let me show you what we're using tonight. I'm using the Sending Cheer Bundle which is the stamp set and the coordinating dies. Now you might notice looking at the dies that there's little loops here at the top of some of these so that you can make tags. Isn't that fantastic? But you might be thinking well how can I use this if I don't want tags and that's exactly what I'm doing here tonight. Because it's photopolymer and it's a solid stamp, it means it's going to be quick and easy for you to use. Let's go ahead and let's start with that gingerbread man. And I've got my pecan pie ink pad here and I've got my image already mounted here. Now I struggle with basal joint arthritis. You can see how swollen this area gets from all the pushing. So for me with these solid images, a couple important tips I want to share with you. The first is always prime a brand new large photopolymer stamp. It's going to make the ink stick better to it once it's been primed. You're going to ink it up in your Versamark ink pad. You're going to stamp off a couple times. You're going to clean it well. You always want to make sure you get the Versamark off. Versamark tends to leave a slightly tacky finish on the stamp. It does not hurt it, but it allows this ink to ink and stick better. So I'm going to go ahead and tap and load that up. Tip number two. 
Bring in your pierce mat. This is a one-time buy and you're absolutely going to love it because it's going to provide some compression from the bottom up. So let's go ahead and let's ink that up. And then once we've got our good coverage, we're going to go ahead and place that on here and we're going to provide lots of firm, even pressure. Again, that pierce mat is helping. I'm cleaning that off camera and we're done with this color. But you can also see there's a little area there for some really cute little hearts. There is a stamp for them, but I opted to do something different with you tonight. Now it needs a face. So I'm gonna come in with the Memento Black ink pad and I'm gonna grab that face image here. We're gonna ink that up. Now this one's small, so I don't need the pierce mat because I found I was pushing too hard and I'm gonna go ahead and give him a little face right there. And I've got the Cherry Cobbler ink here and we're gonna leave some room for the stocking. I want you to leave extra room on the scrap cardstock here at the top simply because the die is going to provide a placement here for the topper of the stocking. I've got shaded spruce, and this time I'm gonna bring in that holly image. We're gonna ink that up, and we are gonna stamp that here, and then we'll switch back over to that cherry cobbler because that's gonna need some berries, and here's what I love. Every single one of these has a separate die. As I mentioned, separate dies, which means by leaving space on your paper, you can die cut these all at once. I'm just gonna use these two as an example. The post-it labeling and cover-up tape is linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. I cannot live without this. Same roll I bought two years ago. You can rip it into any size that you'd like. You're going to align the die where you want it, and when you have it perfectly placed, tack it down. This means when you go to pass all this through your die cutting machine, you don't have to worry about it slipping and sliding and losing its positioning. Remember how I told you to leave that space here. That's really important. I got a little close there, didn't I? I did do that ahead of time. Let me bring those pieces in. So we have our gingerbread, our stocking, our holly, and our berries. Now, I also took the liberty of die cutting a couple tags. And you'll see that these tags are right here inside the die set because we're going to use those to help embellish. Now you might notice here on my gingerbread man, he's got some buttons filled in and he also has the tag at the top. Let's go ahead and trim that off. I've got my paper snips here and you're just going to kind of follow that groove and just cut around the top. It does not have to be perfect. Now here is another silly tip for you. If sometimes you cut like I do and it's not perfectly even, take your fingernail and just kind of go over the edge and that kind of just smooths things out. You'll notice that those look a little bit different than they do on a stamp. And that's because I die cut those little hearts from the designer series paper. We're gonna talk about the paper in just a minute, but you might be looking at that thinking, oh my goodness, how in the world are you gonna get that on there? Because it's so tiny, but I got great news for you. The multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store is fantastic. It dries very, very quickly and it's very, very strong. But like you, I couldn't get a small enough tip until I poured that glue inside the precision tip glue applicator. Now, I will tell you right now that the glue is thick, so you're going to need to work a little patience squeezing it in the bottle. But this is the same bottle I filled up more than two years ago as well. Shake it down, and I'm going to get it started here on my silicone craft sheet. But you can see how tiny I can get these. So all I'm going to do is put a little glue inside that white area, a tiny, tiny bit. Use that take your pick tool and put it right on top. Now this take your pick tool is like my third hand. I cannot live without this. That putty tip is gonna let me pick up sequins and small pieces. And then this take your pick tool attachment helps me remove dimensional backings. Now, before you put this away, I do want you to squeeze it through your silicone craft sheet and clean off that tip and then put the cap on. It's important that you store this vertically. Now, on these two pieces here, I decided to do a little bit of stamping, and we're going to do that from the same ink that we've used before, Cherry Cobbler, and all these greetings are from the same stamp set. This one says, For You, so I'm going to go ahead and ink that up in the cobbler, and there was my head, and then here comes the tag, For You. Now we're going to switch over to this tag, and this time I'm using the words from that stamp set that say, Open Me. Super cute for tags, but they work great for greetings like this card as well and we'll stamp that one here. One last thing about the stocking is I did die cut the topper that's going to go here. Now you can use liquid glue, but that area is pretty broad. And I'm gonna go ahead and add adhesive to the back. Now I opted for designer series paper here. This is not symmetrical, so make sure you're looking for that little bump here at the bottom. And then when you're all set, just tack that in place. All right, we're ready to put all of this together now. Coming back here to the card base, we are going to work on this quadrant here at the bottom first. 
For this, I chose designer series paper from The Joy of Christmas. Now it's double-sided, look at those musical notes, and you'll see some other patterns. My important tip for you is if you want the patterns all in the same direction like I do here with the bolder lines vertical, be cognizant of that when you're doing the cutting and when you're mounting. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal Plus and I'm gonna work in small dashes around the outside. This adhesive is very, very strong and you don't need to use a heavy hand when you apply it. With those stripes going vertically, I'm gonna go ahead and work within the quadrants. Now, because I know I've done this numerous times and you can be off by a little tiny margin when you cut and score the base, don't be worried if you have to trim this up just a little bit. This one's gonna fit okay. Then I've got that green pattern and this one is gonna go up here. Now look at the back side of this one. This is a really pretty wood grain and we're gonna add our adhesive once again. Designer series papers with Stampin' Up! are really an excellent buy, not just because of the gorgeous paper, but because they really thought of everything. They were very careful to make sure that one side was themed. The other side then has a more generic theme and can be used all year round. I'm looking within the same perimeters to make sure that I've got a nice equal margin here all the way around, making sure that this is all gonna fit. Before I go too crazy, I'm gonna give that a good cursory look. Now there's other areas here we're gonna put designer series paper on. I've got two here with the cherry cobbler. You're gonna notice one is taller than the other. The square one is gonna go down here on the front panel. And this is gonna make more sense when we get this all put together. I'm just gonna do this quickly for you. This one is gonna go here and because it's a square, nice and easy, just make sure your pattern's going in the right direction. This one now is gonna go up here in the center quadrant. And again, you're looking for that nice little margin all the way around, and then we're gonna tack that in place. There's two of the exact same size of my other color. Now on the other samples I've got for you, wait till you see how I use the designer series paper differently. Again, this is a square, so we're gonna go ahead and add our adhesive. Make sure that those stripes are going in the same direction if you want the patterns to be the same. You know, sometimes changing up the pattern directions on small patterns are fun simply because it creates an illusion of movement on the card. So if you've got small flowers and they happen to be going in different directions, that's totally fine. This one now is gonna go up here. So I opted just to interchange the colors just to create some visual interest on this card. When it's closed, it's gonna look like this. When it's open, you can see the stair steps. Oh, did I put this in the wrong place? I sure did. Look at I put this in the wrong place. Okay, I'm not even going to edit this out because we all make mistakes. And you're probably wondering, now what, Lisa? This is a small enough piece, so I'm going to teach you the Darth Vader technique. All you're going to do is use your breath and you're going to huff on this. <sighs> your breath is warm, so it's going to moisten the adhesive to help you lift it. <sighs> Aha, there we go. Now I've got a little bit of residual adhesive here. Do you see it? I want to talk to you about this. This is the adhesive remover. It's also linked for you in my website under shop craft room favorites. I'm going to pull in one direction and it's going to remove that excess adhesive. Oh my gosh, this is like a lifesaver, right? We don't have to redo the whole card. The other tip I shared with you a few weeks ago was to use your heat tool very carefully from a distance without burning your fingers. This one goes here. No sooner did I close that card and I saw that and I was like, Lisa, you put it in the wrong spot. This is why I gave you a designer series paper template. Let's go ahead and place this one in this quadrant here. Yeah, I make lots of mistakes just like you do, but that's all part of learning. Now that looks a little bit better because our stairs are perfectly aligned this time. All right, let's go ahead and let's add these images and let me give you some more tips. We're gonna flip this over and I'm grabbing my full size dimensionals. Here comes that take your pick tool. That little paper piercing tool attachment is really great for those arthritic hands if you've got hands like mine. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is well balanced, especially if you're going to mail your card. I'm simply piercing the dimensional with this tool and that's gonna remove those paper backings. This one now is gonna go over here inside this quadrant. We're gonna take that stocking and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Make sure those dimensionals are well balanced. You don't wanna be embarrassed when your card arrives at the other end and it's all lopsided or falling apart. Close this. This one I wanted strategically placed because I wanted to make sure that it fell within this area here. 
let's go ahead and let's add these other pieces as well. And let's talk about adhering those little holly berries next. We're gonna flip this over and I can tell that these are gonna to be too big. So I'm gonna bring in my mini dimensionals for this. I'm gonna work here and here and I am gonna place one near the bottom to make sure it's well balanced. If this is your first time here at my YouTube channel, welcome, so glad that you're here. Let's place this one down here. If you click subscribe and the little bell icon and the word all, YouTube will send you notifications when I'm here with new videos and premieres. We would love to have you join us. Let's go ahead and take this now and I'm gonna make sure that that dimensional falls outside of the other one. So this lays nice and even. Now, if you're looking at those tags, this is where we're gonna put them. We're gonna flip this over. I'm gonna use mini dimensionals for this as well. Gonna remove those backings once again. That take your pick tool, fantastic. And this one is gonna go down here and we're gonna center it inside the panel. This last one I think will fit really well with a full size dimensional here. And let's go ahead and place that up here. I wanna make sure that when the card is open and expanded, not only can they see all the steps, but they also have that pop-out feature. Now, I already did some of the back for you ahead of time, but let me show you what I've got started. I've got a piece of basic white cardstock here, and I used the greeting Sending Cheer, all from the same stamp set. But this time I decided, well, we need a little color and a little fun, and let's use those stamps in a unique way without the dies. So I've got the shaded spruce ink pad here once again, and I've got the gift box image. We're going to ink this up. I don't know about you, but solid stamps are great even for the kids around the holidays to use. I'm gonna make sure that some of this is hanging off simply because I wanna make sure there's room for me to sign my name. I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna switch over to the cherry cobbler. And there is an image that fits inside to create the ribbon and the bow. So we're gonna ink that up as well. And then this, I like to turn a little bit sideways because I'm looking to do my best to get it even inside those boxes and we'll stamp. I didn't do perfect, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Didn't want to get my head in your camera view. I love the fact that a little bit of a mist like this creates a little bit of a highlight. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this, we're going to flip it upside down, we're going to add adhesive here to the back side, and I'm going to create a fun layer for this card, and we're going to add it here to the Cherry Cobbler cardstock. Again, all these cutting dimensions are for you inside that project sheet. Let's flip this upside down as well. We're gonna add our adhesive. We are gonna turn the card base over, so upper left, and that is where this panel is going to go. Again, you wanna work with inside those crease lines and margins all the way around and secure that in place. Once you've got it all put together, it's freestanding, so it makes a great pop-up and a pop-out display, and still plenty of room to put your name on the back. And again, I did this one in white so that you can follow along with me, but wait until you see these other cards. This next one is going to use a brand new stamp set called Year to Celebrate. Love it for birthdays, but it's gonna be great for any other celebration, including New Year's cards. And here is the card I made. This uses the Merry Bold and Bright Designer Series paper. Now you might be looking thinking, that doesn't look like Christmas paper. You're right, because we talked about that here. Stampin' Up's Designer Series papers are double-sided, giving you lots of options to use them all year round. Lots of fun. Look at those flat sequins. Aren't those pretty? And then the card expands. We've got some party blowers there. Colored card base. I kept my patterns all going the same way. And then of course, the back side of this one as well. And of course, freestanding. So now you have two. This last one uses a beautiful floral bundle in the mini catalog called Translucent Florals. Beautiful, and it stamps just like this. A very distinctive stamp to give you texture. The one reason I love the coordinating dies is you're gonna see these pieces here, which means you can build a flower that doesn't include the stamp. So this really does double duty. And of course, you've got your outline images and some really fantastic greetings. But wait until you see this card. You are going to fall in love with this. I know you all love shiny metallic papers, and this one really plays up this paper well. Again, designer series paper in the mini catalog called Shining Brightly. I did stamp off a layer of ink to make those a little lighter so they didn't compete with that beauty. I did heat emboss my greeting using the double oval punch, added some festive pearls on here, left this nice and simple because why not? That designer series paper is the star of the show. And then here is the back side, and it just carried over a small strip that would typically be discarded here to decorate the back side. 
So lots and lots of beautiful options tonight. As always, I love to know your favorites. Pop down right now in the comments below and let me know which one you prefer. Don't forget that project sheet. You're gonna want that designer series paper template to make this assembly so much easier for you. Now there's a few things I wanna share with you because I'd love to keep you in the know that's happening here at the Stamp Studio. There's a special release with Stampin' Up! products. You can get all the information over on my website. Click on Shop Stampin' Up! products and it's gonna lead you right over to all the details. In addition to that, if you haven't heard about Stamp Studio memberships, we are having a blast because we know you love new ideas. So for $5 a month, every Monday, a tutorial comes right to your inbox. These are not shared anywhere else. A huge amount of ideas, and I even give you some alternate ideas for the card that I share with you and written instructions on how to change things up. Fantastic for those of you that are making cards on a regular basis, maybe mass producing them for donations or charitable causes. In addition to that, there's a level two that's going to provide you a fun fold card. In addition to everything in level one, I'm going to give you a discount in my PDF tutorial library. And of course, there's going to be random prize giveaways. And it does not matter what country you live in. We would absolutely love to have you join us. Mark your calendar. We're going to be back with you next Monday, which is October 2nd already. We've got some fantastic projects to share with you. I hope that you'll mark your calendar to join me then. Gina, thanks for all your help moderating with me tonight. And I look forward to having you all join with me next week. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.